Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. This is the drive shaft out of my Canty Universal milling head. This is a shaft that a sliding gear rides up on and you might be able to tell from the video that these splines are horribly worn. That line at the end of the shaft almost looks like this might have been fixed in the past and is two pieces although it's really difficult to tell if that's just wear or if it really is in two pieces and this is the gear that slides up that shaft and the internal splines look like they're in pretty good condition it does slide on the shaft just fine and it does hold its position relatively good but there is an awful lot of backlash And quite frankly, I could put this back together as it is, and I'm sure it would work fine, but I just can't bring myself to do that. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and give it a try at making a new shaft. I really don't have anything to lose. I still have the old one if things go south. As usual, I took some time to model up the new shaft in Fusion 360 does a few things for me not the least of which is it gives me a reference then for all the dimensions so when I'm machining this thing I can at least check to make sure that I'm doing it right but I also use it as an opportunity to sort of pre-plan how I'm going to machine a part like I did here in this second model that I created I modeled this second version as if I was machining it with a one quarter inch wide milling cutter of some sort. Then I took this second model and sent it to a 3D printer. Now although a 3D printed model is not a perfect facsimile of the final piece, it's pretty close and I've used these as reference before and was surprised at how accurate they do come out to be. So by modeling it this way as if I was cutting it with the milling cutter it gives me an opportunity to perfect I guess my order of operations without wasting any material. And the material I plan to use is this piece of 1045 shaft. It's about one and a half inches in diameter, which is exactly the size that I needed for the shaft. It was given to me by a friend that is a fellow volunteer down at the roundhouse. But I don't have a lot of room for error here. I only have this one piece, so if I ruin it, it means I have to get some additional stock. I was watching a recent episode of Haxby Shed in which Paul is trying to make a new feed nut for his Harrison horizontal mill and instead of making it out of a piece of bronze to start he used a piece of Delrin to start. So I bought a couple of pieces of one and a half inch Delrin off of eBay and we're going to chuck this up in the lathe and machine the end of this down to one and a quarter inch which is the size of the shafted part and we'll use this as my first attempt at cutting a spline shaft rather than diving straight into the 1045. the through hole on this lathe is pretty small and I don't want to waste a whole bunch of this Delrin so I'm going to chuck it up anyway and it's just going to have a crap ton of stick out which also means I'm probably going to have a boatload of run out um, and I certainly don't feel like grabbing the four jaw chuck here for this experiment maybe I should but I'm not going to I'm going to try something else I'm going to bring in my steady rest and maybe that will work here that I can 
use it to get a little better alignment on this shaft before I start machining it. I've got a test indicator here on my stand here and I'll bring that in and touch it on the end see if I can't adjust this steady rest so that the end of this shaft is running reasonably true. Well, that's still about ten thousandths off, and at this point, I don't think I care anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and face it off with the steady rest in place, and then we'll drill it for a center. Using the steady rest the way that I was using it was pointless. So with it out of the way. I knocked the shaft around a little bit to get it running reasonably true and now I'll just drill a center and bring in the tailstock support. I've got a, I think a CCGT insert here in the tool post, normally used for cutting that's got a really nice sharp corner on. I think do well with the donut. I just want to make a skim pad here to cut kind of it so I can take a measurement and get a base. This is my first time uh, machining. Delrin on a lathe, and I'm really impressed with how easy it, it machines and the, the finish quality is, is really nice. It's leaving behind something that I wasn't expecting.
My target dimension, one inch and 250 thousandths. We'll go ahead and put a nice heavy chamfer on the end and take it out of the lathe. Well, we're coming over here to the KNT 2HL horizontal milling machines. What I'm going to use to cut the splines, we've got the footstock for the dividing head to mount onto the right end of the table. I had other options to use to cut these splines. I could have used an end mill on the bridge port using the same dividing head and footstock, but I really wanted to do this on the Kearney and Trekker. I'll set the shaft down on the mill table just to kind of get an idea of where I need to bring in and mount the dividing head. Both this brown and sharp uh, universal dividing head and the footstock have little index keys in the bottom of them to help align it to the slot in the table, although they're not quite the right size for this table. I think I'm going to have to make a couple of new sets. This chuck is the only way I currently have to mount stock in the dividing head. There is a dead center drive dog setup that would have come with this dividing head. Of course, I don't have that. That was probably long lost. It's a brown and sharp number 10 taper, if I recall correctly. I can't seem to find a source for anything like that. I'll have to keep my eyes open at auctions. Now I'm cutting a six spline shaft here, which means I need six divisions. And according to the chart, I need to use the 15 hole dividing plate, which is the very most center uh, set of index pins or holes on this dividing plate. I need to adjust this handle so that the pin falls into one of those first holes. So in order to rotate this stock one sixth of a turn, I'll need to use the 15 hole indexing plate and spin the handle six times and then add 10 more holes to it. So these sector arms here on the front of the plate kind of give you a little bit of help in counting those additional holes. So I'll loosen this screw and then count over 10 holes and then align the second blade to be right in front of that 10th hole. It looks like it was already set up for 10 holes, so I can just go ahead and, and tighten this screw down so that those sector arms don't move. I'm going to do a quick test of this setup to make sure everything's correct. So I'm going to put this yellow paint on the very top of the shaft in its current position. So we'll turn the handle now six times and then move ahead ten mm -hmm. holes. So that should be the first position. Now I'll relocate the sector arms and do that again. I'll do six turns and then move ahead 
to the tenth hole, which will be at that second Ooh. arm. So that's twice. Okay, so this should be the last iteration and should bring that paint pen marker right up to the top of the footstock and it looks like we've returned to our original location. So I think we got the dividing plate set up correctly. Well, the next thing I want to do here is spend some time to see just how well the shaft is aligned with the Y and the X axis of the machine. I don't expect it to be all that accurate, but I'm hoping I can at least get it close. I really do need to either build or rather make a set of keys for the bottom side of the footstock and the dividing head or maybe just take them off completely and manually align them each time. Well, this is proving to be more difficult than I really did expect. I'm not having a whole lot of luck here. So I think what I'm going to do is run with it for this experiment. But before I actually run the actual job, I'm going to likely take these off of the mill, remove those keys, and either make a new set or just run without them and line it up manually because I think those keys being the wrong size are making this more difficult than it needs to be. Well, we'll do our best to see if we can't tram this thing in horizontally from the top here. I don't, again, expect this to be very easy because this footstock, I have yet to clean it or take it apart. This is the first time that I've used it, so everything on it's a bit stiff. The fact that this material is Delrin is actually complicating this even more because it flexes. So if I loosen the footstock, the shaft flexes actually quite a bit. And if it's not aligned well with that center right hole, ahead. it will flex more than you'd think. But as soon as I loose it, you can see it spring back. So I... I'm going to have to work at this for a little bit. Well, it's nowhere near perfect and took a lot more work than I was expecting, but I think I'm going to just run with it as it is. Uh, it again is a bit of an experiment here, so it's not going to be the end of the world if, if I have to do this again. Well, now we're ready to go ahead and build up the arbor with spacers and a milling cutter. I've got a one inch arbor here mounted into the machine. So the first couple of spacers will get the milling cutter about the center of the arbor, but that first spacer is a little bit bigger. It's more of a bearing and 
the overarm, the internal overarm support will slide over it. I have a couple more spacers that we'll put on here and then a key and then the milling cutter itself. This is a quarter inch wide, 250 thousandths wide cutter. I'll thread this uh, end nut on by hand and just get it finger tight for now. Well, now I can slide on the outboard overarm support and then tighten the nut on the end of the arbor shaft. I'm going to start by setting some zeros and my zeros will be the milling cutter will be positioned at the center of the shaft and the very top of that machined part on the end. Of course if I had a DRO this process would be pretty simple but we'll do it the old school way. I guess it's old school. What would I know? Anyway, I'll take a piece of paper and put it in between the milling cutter and the shaft and just slowly bring the table forward until that cutter grabs the paper. And then I know I'm about three thousandths of an inch away from the shaft. I have this long travel dial indicator with a magnetic back on it. We'll set that on the knee and we'll set it to zero before we move the cutter to the other side of the shaft. Now if I had transparent hands you would see that I'm doing the same paper trick on this side of the shaft that I did on the front of it. At this point I just need to move the saddle back half the distance that it traveled on the dial and that should put the cutter directly over top dead center of the Delrin shaft. To set the zero for the cutter height, I'm doing the same thing, just move the cutter over top of the machined portion of the shaft with the paper shim, and I'll bring it down until the cutter grabs the paper and pulls it out of my fingers. I've zeroed out the dials on the handles, but that won't account for backlash, so I'm using a second dial indicator attached to the column to give me my Z height and then using that same magnetic indicator on the knee to give me my Y travel. I think we have everything set up and ready to go. Got all the zeros set. The alignment of the shaft isn't perfect but when I go to make the actual shaft uh, I think we'll do this a little bit differently. That's all the time I have for this video, so I appreciate you following along. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're a subscriber, I thank you. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. You'll be able to follow along as we make this shaft. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.